Hi friends, welcome back to Arc Tutorials. We are continuing with our Angular 9 full tutorial series and in today's episode we are going to learn about HTTP client params. Extremely important uh, when you are talking about an endpoint which will accept a data which can be publicly exposed, right? Or another way of saying it is if you can relate to query params, right? So the parameters are available and you can view them in the URL. That is called as uh, params that we can send and we need not to get it from any form or anything we can directly use it and inject them right in our before our http calls we will learn all about it in today's episode welcome back my name is Sridhar. i have over 10 years of experience as a full stack developer and i'm here to share my knowledge with you all during the course of this tutorial series if you have any doubts any questions any queries feel free to ask me in the comment section below. I'll be happy to help you. I'm putting in a lot of hard work in bringing these tutorials for you. So I request you to please support me and encourage me by subscribing to my channel and liking the videos. Thank you so much in advance. This is part of the Angular 9 full tutorial playlist where we have more than 60 plus tutorials so far. The playlist link is in the description box below. Make sure you check it out if you want to learn and master Angular 9. So we are reaching the end of the mini series, which is on Angular HTTP. Um, today we are learning about uh, HTTP client params. In the previous episodes, we have learned about observable services, HTTP client, get, put, post, delete, headers. Today we will cover about HTTP params. All right, so let's get started. Before we do, a quick word on HTTP client. Um, all HTTP operations in Angular happen over using HTTP client. It's in the package angular slash common slash HTTP. Before we use HTTP client, we have to import a module called HTTP client module. If you don't do this step, you will likely see errors. A lot of good developers also make this mistake. So make sure you don't make it. Import HTTP client module first and then import the class HTTP client to work with any HTTP request or responses. Now talking about HTTP client params. So just like headers, we can send params with our HTTP calls. These calls can be any method. It can be a post, get, delete, put, etc. Usually you will see making, finding yourself making calls with either get, put or delete. So when you want to send some kind of an ID or when you want to send some data in the params, like in the UI, in the URL, right? So we'll see some of these examples and we'll do some hands-ons. But remember one thing, HTTP params are immutable, which means once you create them, you cannot edit them or reassign them or change them. They cannot be modified because once you change, it will give you the entire mutation back, right? So remember that, that they are immutable. Now. This is an extremely important and useful concept when you are dealing with data which can be accessed over and shown on the URL to retain. For example, search value, right? When you search something in Google, you can still see that search data in the URL. So that is an exposed um, uh, data in the URL, which is again can be a param, right? So these are the params which are available in the URL, right? Now, I told you HTTP params are immutable, so make sure um, you don't try to change them or edit them. You will find yourself getting errors or the data will not be updated or sent correctly. Okay. And HTTP params, the class has eight methods that we can use just like how we have seen it in HTTP headers. HTTP headers had seven. HTTP params has eight where we can do multiple operations like append, has, get, keys and then delete to string, etc. right? So these are all something that will be based on your application knowledge uh, and applications requirements. But um, these are common set that you would find yourself using is set, um, getting append, and then checking if a particular key is set or not, etc. So make sure um, you can try it out all. I'll show you a few examples and then I'll leave you with some homework that you can try it out. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and implement the HTTP client params. First, we have to define the object and using and initiate that object with some parameters of HTTP params class. And then um, we can then see that in the URL, right? 
So let's get started. I'll make some quick technical notes for you and then we will get into the coding part. So HTTP params. All right. So remember first thing we can pass to use HTTP params. My bad. We need to import the class the parents create an object instance and initialize with some variables that we want to pass right we can pass http params to any http method it can be a get can be a put can be a delete patch etc etc anything so whatever um, you want to include you can include it there so that's not a, uh, any issue you can pass it but usually with post we don't do it because we are submitting the data right so it doesn't make sense to add um, uh, something which to it but still you can do it there is no uh, hard and fast rule that you cannot um, so it's up to us it's up to our application um, interface logic that we want so let me give you some examples of HTTP params. Before I do that, uh, params are immutable. That means you cannot, we cannot modify them. Okay. And then once we do that, um, remember that params will look something like that. So if you see something like um, facebook.com question mark profile ID equal to some number, right? So see, this is a param right this is a parameter this is the name this is the key this is the value similarly if you go to um, left say if you go to google search right if you go to google search and you will see something like uh, they will have something like question mark query equal to or some whatever you searched for it right so it would be available in there so basically you can see it in the url here it would have a key and a value right that's what we call it as params all right so now that coming to our use case right so if you remember in the in the episode uh, in the episode of de uh, get delete or update we had used stub data right we had used stub data now we will pass params right will pass params like it can be visible in the URL so let's we can pass that value and get it so let's see that now so I'm going back so if you want you can refer to the previous episodes previous episodes episodes where we have covered post put not pots post, put, get, etc. Okay, so we created a contact service called contact.service.ts, right? So we have this service. Now I'm going to go and say update, right? So here we were passing the contact or in the delete, right? If you see here in the question mark, we are passing it as a delete. Now we want to pass this as a parameter, let's say, right? Or you want to pass any value for that matter, right? So for the update, right, update contact, let's say we want to pass some dynamic value which can be visible in the URL, right? Or the best example I'll create, I'll create a new method for you. So here in our application, if you see, we are showing a list of details, but if we want to see a specific one, right? We want to see only one detail, right? Uh, so how do we do that? So we can do something like, so let's implement that get call here and I'll say get contact by ID, let's say, right? So let's implement this now, get contact by ID, right? So what this will do, we will post one, uh, we'll post to a certain um, ID and we'll expect the data to be displayed, right? So how do, can we do? Let's define first one const object HTTP params equal to new HTTP params, right? Now here we will tell him 
this object that what we want is a is a instance right and from object so we'll say from object right remember so this way it will form the url query for us remember this is extremely important a lot of people will make mistake here they don't add it uh, because they will think it would automatically add it it will not get added automatically it will be added only when we do either from object or from string so remember when we do from object it would add like this from param also we can do and from object also we can do there is no difference in the url the difference is in how we will process it right so remember and the easiest way that we do is through from object okay so let's do that so from object and i'm saying i want to send a parameter right so what is the parameter i want to send let's say param1 or you can you can actually send anything you can say query right and i'll set the query i'll say search for a user called mark right this is my query i can i can pass anything any param right and then i'll say this dot contact service right so this dot http client and let's i'm just copying it quickly start http client dot get okay and here i will pass the url contacts okay and i have to pass the params so just here in the last episode we have seen that we pass using headers right we have passed a parameter called headers similarly now we will pass something called params so we can say params and then pass that http params right so take a look at the carefully so again we created a http params object and we are passing some default values right which is from object so now the query would become like this when it gets submitted it would get submitted like localhost 3000 slash contacts question mark query equal to mark right so this is what will be the end url because this is our url and we are passing the uh, param like this right so let's see that in action so the best way to call this is again go to your component and just throw in a i'll just throw in a button and let's do a click and say get contact so we will be doing the crud operation so don't worry about that we will make it all dynamic soon but it's important for us to first understand uh, how to how it works and then we can easily uh, implement the uh, crud operations in no time so get contact by id let's call it and dot subscribe and we'll say data okay so we have the data here we have the arrow method and just console log and say hello okay so does not subscribe to void right so what is this let's go to the method implementation because we have to return this okay okay so now that error should be gone so now you see its method is uh, the error is gone so we have it it's a simple thing we are just getting the idea here for us is to learn the param and nothing much so we are trying to learn about the params right so like i said now when we make a call it should call this url see it should be like this in the param let's see that okay so let's go to our application let's go to contacts okay there is some error in the routing so let's check that out um, here we have the get contact and then dot subscribe and i'll just dump the data and do we have any error here in the button no okay so there is some definitely error that's going on so check it let's check it out so it says uh, invalid failed to execute set attribute on click is not a valid attribute name all right so it says this is not closed correctly all right so we go to contacts 
okay so now we have our get contact let's open console network okay so i'm going to minimize this so we click here and then we should see the param sent with the contact id let's see so now when you see you see here it says contacts query equal to mark right however this endpoint doesn't have that logic but you are you should be more worried about how we are sending the params that's more important for us so once we have it and then we will be able to pass this params now see these are called params right so this is how we can pass the data now i'll show you one example of what i can do params here is i can say last name equal to johnson right so it will give me empty okay let's see and say id equal to 2 so this is working so let's do one thing let's go to our contact dot service and i'll just make it id equal to 2 okay so now let's go ahead and let's click it again and now we'll see let's clear this console and i'll click on get contact now now see it says 200 we should see only one response right so it's showing for the matching one because now we are passing it through the uh, query okay so similarly let's do and id equal to 3 so now we are getting two results so if you see i'm passing multiple parameters right so let's pass them also so see now i'm passing multiple parameters but it will give me error because it's duplicate right it's duplicate so what we can do and we can say all righty let's try so now if you see the url it says id equal to 2 and id equal to 3 so that means now we are passing multiple using array right so that's the beauty of it that from when you say from object it will create the query string for us and we can pass any number of it so now i can say last name equal to say mark right so i think these are unnecessary we don't need since it's an object i'll just get rid of it here okay all right so so now we see that it will send three parameters id equal to two and id equal to three and last name equal to mark right so that way we can send any any number of um, you know params into our url so this is a standard practice that is used in angular applications i want you to try it out i want you to learn how to do this it's a good way to build an object now i told you there is one more way of doing it which is using two string right so you can try it here you can see it here you can do when you do two string all you do is you use a template variable and you insert the value right so which is another way of from instead of doing it from an object now we do it from the string that's all it is so try this out i leave this option to you as a homework let me know if you face any issues uh, i'll be happy to help you all right in the next episode we are going to talk and learn about http interceptors all right a another important concept you don't want to miss on that so make sure you check it out stay tuned thank you so much for joining see you in the next episode